Welcome to another episode of In Range. I've got two really cool rifles here on the table. I've got a Robinson Arms XCRM and 308. I think the best semi automatic 308 on the market. We've got an HK MR556 right here on my left, your right of the video. But I'm not here to talk about the rifles. I'm here to talk about the scopes. And these scopes are Sig Sauer Tango 6Ts, 1 to 6 LPVOs. Um, just a few weeks ago in November, the Department of Defense provided a $77 million contract to Sig Sauer for the provisioning of LPVOs to the general military forces. Now, that's a paradigm shift. LPVOs and the Tango 6T have been used by the Squad Designated Marksman Program and Special Forces already, but now we're seeing the Tango 6T being provided as a standard combat optic to be put on standard M4A1 carbines. And, you know, up until then, we've seen the Aimpoint and other sighting systems, and LPVOs being issued as a standard issue optic is a paradigm shift. And I find this kind of ironic because while we were doing the What Was Don't Do project in 2017, one of the optics we standardized on was the Trigicon 1 to 4 AccuPoint. And at that time, we were told that we were making a gamer gun and that LPVOs are gamer optics. Um, we've seen LPVOs being used in 3 gun, 2 gun, and a lot of competitive shooters for. Uh, well over a decade now, but now we're seeing the Tango 6T being adopted by the military forces, and it makes sense. A red dot provides you the absolute fastest sighting system, but a red dot provides you zero magnification. And in the field, you're going to be doing a lot more of target identification and trying to figure out what you're looking at than you are ever firing at it. And having a scope on your rifle that allows you to go up to, in this instance, the Tango 6T, 6X, allows you to be able to do that type of identification in the field much easier than having binoculars and having to switch between some sort of magnified optic and your rifle. At that point, if what you're looking at needs to be engaged, you can zoom in, you can use the BDC in either one of these reticles to actually determine the range to the target and engage. Now, we've got two different types of reticles here on the table. We've got a horseshoe dot, which I think is more of a DMR style. We're going to get into all of this later in the video. And we've got the Hellfire M855A1. We have single focal plane, second focal plane, and we're going to talk about also in this video what that means. So here we go. So here we are with the Sig Sauer Tango 6T second focal plane scope. This has the Hellfire M855A1 BDC reticle in it. This one, uh, being second focal plane, it has a little bit easier to acquire eye box. And the apocryphal information that we've received is that the second focal plane version of the Tango 6T is typically used by special forces because they emphasize speed over the ability to use the reticle for consistent ranging. It also requires a little more training because if you're using a second focal plane scope, if you're going to use the BDC for range estimation, you have to be at the specific magnification that it's designed for to be applicable. Because you'll see as we zoom, we have a mini IPSC target here down at 50 yards. The reticle does not change size, but the target does, or the view does. And what that means is that using the BDC for range estimation can only be done at 6X any other magnification setting would be in an inaccurate reading. So there's a little bit more of a training requirement required with using the second focal plane scope to remember that you need to either use math when you're at a different magnification range or to be at 6x to use the BDC for the range estimation functionality. That said, second focal plane, as I mentioned earlier, provides a more generous and easy to acquire eye box, meaning it's faster to use uh, under time stress situations. Um, it also means that it's easier to get video through the scope, which we're doing today with a tact cam, and I was able to focus this easier. It's much easier to, to film footage through a second focal plane scope than a first focal plane because as the magnification change, the focus doesn't. So that said, you'll, stay, you'll see that this stays more clear throughout the range of magnification um, because of how cameras work. That is not reflected in how it actually works when you're looking through it with the human eye. Through the human eye, it stays clear throughout the range of magnification, regardless of if it's first or second focal plane, as long as you have it focused. But in this regards, the second focal plane Tango 6T is going to look a little clearer than the first focal plane. But that said, you can see here, again, the Hellfire M855A1 reticle in the second focal plane version of the Tango 6T. Um, as we've been told, used by special forces because of the quick acquisition. So the other thing that's interesting, and I don't know if this will show up well on footage, but the red dot is actually brighter in this version of the scope than in the first focal plane. I have to close the lid for you to see that. Um, it's not showing up well on camera, but the uh, neither one of the Tango 6Ts have a particularly right, bright red dot in terms of using it for as a red dot sight um, at 1x, but the this version, the second focal plane with the Hellfire reticle, 
due to the fact that it illuminates a smaller area of the reticle, as in just a dot versus a horseshoe, means that it's brighter in its intensity, and this is a little better in the bright Arizona desert. But I would say that this one, neither this one nor the uh, alternative first focal plane really are applicable in terms of using the red dot for anything than an illuminated reticle. You can see as I zoom out here to 1x, this is the red dot on the brightest setting, and um, the camera doesn't pick it up as well as the human eye, but that red dot's not particularly bright, and I would find that to be really the only deficiency that I could call out in the Tango 6 T-Series, is that the illumination just isn't bright enough for our bright Arizona environment. But then again, not everyone's in this sort of bright environment either. So once again, this is the second focal plane. I'm going to zoom up one more time. We're at 1x. Let's go ahead and go all the way up to 6 with the Hellfire M855A1 BDC reticle. So this is the Sig Sauer Tango 6T first focal plane scope. Um, this one has the horseshoe style reticle. And apocryphally, we're being told this is the one that's going to see the most distribution within the military. However, both the first and second focal plane scopes are being used, so they are both adopted militarily speaking. Uh, the advantage of a single focal plane scope, as you're seeing here, is that the reticle changes with the magnification, meaning the dimensions of the reticle stay the same, regardless of if you're at 1 or 6x. That means that at 1x, 2x, 3x, 5x, 6x, it doesn't matter. You can use the reticle for your range estimation and it will not change. If you're using a second focal plane scope, the uh, reticle will stay the same size to your perception, regardless of the magnification you're at, meaning you can only use its BDC and range estimation capabilities at a specific focus point, meaning probably at 6x, usually the top end of magnification. So. Um, the second focal plane scope has a little bit better eye box just by the nature of how that kind of optic works, meaning in theory it's probably a little faster to use in CQB, etc. But it also requires a little more training in that you can't use the range estimation except at the highest end of magnification. With this scope, you can use it, the range estimation across the board at regardless, regardless of what magnification setting you are at. So from a broad distribution perspective, um, if that information we received is correct, this being the standard scope being issued to the predominant amount of soldiers using it makes sense. It requires a little less uh, training, and the amount of speed difference isn't really significant enough to worry about too much. So the other thing I do want to talk about is the red dot on this. So let's go ahead and go to the brightest setting because we are in Arizona. And that is the brightest setting right there, and that's at 6x. Let's go ahead and zoom back to 1x. And... Uh, I have noticed that the second focal plane scope with the Hellfire reticle is brighter. I'm going to go ahead and cover this so you can see how bright that dot is. And this illumination is trying to illuminate the entire horseshoe reticle. And as a result, it's really not that bright. It really more is an illuminated reticle for low light than it is a red dot replacement. And so at the low end of 1x, you can certainly use the reticle and it's very quick to acquire and easy to use um, under time duress. But using it as a red dot sight is something that I would question, uh, both for the first and second focal plane scope version of the Tango 6T. So as you can see, this reticle is a little bit more complex than the, uh, uh, you will see that it's more complex than the Hellfire version uh, with stadia lines for uh, not only bullet drop compensation, but windage and uh, moving targets even. So the dots across the board, etc. So. Uh, this is a scope that uh, at really at any distance would be this reticle should be quite viable and allow you to do a lot of things that a DMR would want to do. So uh, it's interesting to see that they're adopting both and both have their pluses and minuses. I'm going to go ahead and turn that uh, red dot off. And uh, But uh, I just want to also say that I'm using a Tacticam here to do the filming and it would be more clear with the human eye than it is through this video. That's just the nature of filming through a scope. So do not think that this footage is indicative of how clear the scope is because it is far more clear in person than it is through this video. So here let's try and do a direct comparison between the two. On the left we have the Hellfire M855A1 reticle in the second focal plane and on the right we have the horseshoe dot reticle in the first focal plane. That should make it very clear what I was saying earlier. The first focal plane means that the dimensions of the reticle never change in relation to the magnification of the target downrange. But uh, the second focal plane on the left, the reticle stays the same size in perception to the shooter 
regardless of the magnification you're set to. That means that the bullet drop compensation capabilities of the second focal plane reticle only work at the highest end of magnification, while on the first focal plane, on the right, the dimensions are in relation to the target downrange regardless of the magnification settings you're set to. So we're just zooming in and out here a little bit to give you an idea of how both of these look in the field. So here we have a direct comparison of the illumination of both scopes. They're set to the highest illumination setting. As you can see in the bright Arizona environment, neither of them are bright. However, the Hellfire M855A1 reticle is much brighter than the horseshoe dot version thereof. Even when I zoom in with the horseshoe dot, it's really more of an illuminated reticle than what I would think of as an ersatz red dot sight in an LPVO. So in that regard, yeah, it would help in regards to contrast or in low contrast environments or picking up the reticle in low light. But other than that, I would not consider either of these a replacement for a red dot. Hopefully you enjoyed looking through both of these scopes and getting an idea of what the Department of Defense has standardized on as LPVOs for the U.S. military forces. You're going to see more of these scopes on the channel. I've already got footage with the XCR in a two-gun match, um, including through it with the Tacticam camera. Hopefully that'll be cool. But um, I want to just talk about the realities of LPVOs. Like, as I said at the introduction, an LPVO does give you a, a tighter, smaller eye box than a standard red dot sight would be. So if you're going to be in the most concerning of CQB, I would still say you want a red dot. But what an LPVO can provide is the much of the functionality of a red dot, but with the ability to magnify up in these instances, again, to 6x, and be able to identify what you're looking at, whether it's a small object in the field or even a person and trying to identify what that person is. Is it a threat? Do they have a weapon? Are they friendly? Etc. And having an LPVO on your rifle provides all that without any other external optics or requirements. LPVOs are rugged enough at this point, and have been for a long time, that they are completely capable of being beat up and bashed around in the field. And I think that's one of the concerns that the military has had. But seeing these in use with the Squad Disney and Mexican program, as well as the Special Forces, um, as well as SIG providing them already ready to go in the mount, torqued, all you do is take them out of the box, screw them onto your Picatinny rail, zero them and go, um, uh, has gotten to the point where the LPVO is a completely viable military optic. And all those people that have been talking all along about these being just gamer gear, well, maybe they were right at one point, but that's where, on the field of competition, things like this are figured out, and in the future, as the technology evolves, as we see here with these optics and others, they become completely viable for military and tactical applications. Hunting as well. So, stay tuned for more content about the Sig Sauer Tango 6Ts in competition and otherwise. I do have to say that Sig did send these optics to us for our review, so we did not pay for these, so we must disclose that in the interest of fairness and openness. That said, all of the rounds being fired, all the time to do this, is completely supported by viewers like you via Patreon, because InRange is a Patreon-only supported project. We have no financial supporting from any sponsors, no advertisers, completely proactively demonetized, you, the viewer, keep in range alive. If you like this kind of what we hope to be intelligent, insightful, and um, not clicky content, but deep content, please consider it. If you already are, thank you. If you can't, do understand. You can find in range on multiple distribution points, not just YouTube. You can find them all at inrange.tv/watch. And again, thanks, and share with your friends.